when we bought the boat she was in pretty sad shape and a very neglected condition. It was clear from the beginning that there was a lot of work to be done. Having no sponsors for a restoration project of that magnitude meant we had to budget very carefully and definitely do all the work ourselves. It didn't stop us though taking on the challenge ahead but it certainly didn't make it any less daunting either. Our first task was to ready her for the voyage north to Whangarei. We removed the generator and rigging. And then hauled her out to remove the keel at the only yacht able to haul a boat with a draft of 3.83 metres. Over the course of a long weekend we removed the keel, resealed her and relaunched her. And eventually hauled her at North Sim Boatyard where we were ready to start on the biggest project of our lives. And so we started, we stripped her down to bear hull, we re-glassed, new bulkheads, new floor supports, new floor. At this stage we both had full-time jobs, we had sold our house, we moved into a tiny room in the boatyard while we focused entirely on making the first area of the boat livable for us to actually move on before continuing on with the rest of the project. It took us five months of working at night, working on weekends to get this area built which included the galley, the nav berth, both aft cabins, the nav station and the saloon. Next was the master cabin and that included rebuilding diesel and water tanks as well. After all that interior building it was sort of time to get to the outside of the boat and we started with the modification to the transom. And that led on to the top sides, um, lots of repairs, lots of sanding, lots of bearing and definitely lots more sanding. With the top coat on it was time to also do the pinstripe and the bootstripe and eventually the sign writing which was a pretty exciting moment for us. We moved back inside just to sort the anchor locker.
and we moved back outside to start the hard top and with Pete now working full time on the boat, progress was definitely a lot faster. We also made modifications to the front cockpit. Repainted the deck, refitted the tow rails and the chain plates and the various tracks. Finished the aft cockpit and waterproofed the boat to remove the shed. We also modified the keel, which meant removing lead, cutting down the draft, extending the leading and the trailing edge and manufacturing a bulb so that it can take the extra weight as required from the new keel plan that was drawn up. With the keel finished, it was now time to move back inside and get started on the last area of the interior and the last of the diesel and water tanks. Of course there were always lots of projects happening at the same time, whether they were bigger ones like the engine or smaller ones like building shower boxes, just to name a few. The mast and the rigging were another big project which also included um, servicing the existing furlough adding a new furler for the stay sail and repainting the mast. We also modified the boom, we had to shorten it by a metre because of the hard top so Pete did all the fabrication. The launch day was coming closer at this point so it was time for us to get ourselves into gear on anything below the waterline ground open and peeled any big areas that needed repairing and any areas that needed reinforcing and slowly but surely started to see what the actual finished picture really was going to look like. Things started to feel real as we started to move the keel actually across to the slipway and onto the cradle that eventually the boat was going to go on and the preparation started on getting all the keel bolts into the actual keel and ready for the boat to move across. A hundred ton crane lifted the boat. We then moved the cradle that had the keel on back up the slipway underneath the boat and then lowered the boat back onto its keel bolts and keel.
over the next few days we basically loosened one nut at a time and backfilled all around the keel bolts from the top and we also fitted the rudder and the prop and um, the prop speed and all the million other things that you do before you go in the water.